Falls are the leading cause of non-fatal injuries among older adults, so fall prevention is important. Assistive devices may be used to help promote increased safety, but it is important to select the proper type, proper fit, and proper technique. Canes and walkers are the most common types of assistive devices to use for balance. A single tip cane is the least supportive because it makes only one point of contact on the ground. There are different types of handles you can choose per your preference. You can also get them in fun colors too. They also have collapsible ones that can fit in a bag or purse. Make sure those type are fully locked out before use. A quad cane is more supportive because instead of one point of contact, the quad cane has four. Though one is more supportive than the other, you use them the same way. First, talking about fit, you can have a family member help you or look in a mirror. Standing tall with arms relaxed by your sides, the handle of your cane should align with your wrist crease. Most canes are adjustable with a push pin to adjust to different heights. Secondly, for proper use during gait. If you have an injured or weaker leg, you would use the cane in the opposite hand, but for balance purposes, you may choose whichever side you feel the most comfortable and secure. Advance the cane and the opposite leg at the same time, then step with the other leg. When ambulating, stairs or steps, use handrails for extra safety whenever possible. Indicated in red will be the weaker leg. When going up, you step with the foot closest to the cane first or your stronger leg, followed by the cane and opposite foot. When going down, the cane goes first, followed by your weaker leg, then the opposite leg. An easy tip to remember is up with the good, down with the bad. More supportive than canes are walkers because they offer four points of contact more spread out on the ground. There are also different types of walkers and they offer different types of support and convenience. A standard walker is going to be the most supportive but less convenient and less mobile. A two-wheeled walker would be convenient in mobility but less supportive to balance. Finally, the rollator with the seat is the most convenient in terms of mobility due to rotational wheels for greater ease in turning, maneuvering, and ambulating across varied surfaces. However, due to the increased mobility, it does make it less supportive to balance. There are also other safety measures to consider when using a rollator, such as braking when appropriate, such as when sitting down. Fitting a walker is the same as a cane. The top of the handle should align with your wrist crease. Ambulating with a walker, stand tall with feet near the back legs of the walker. If walking with the standard walker without wheels, you progress the walker forward, followed by step, step, etc. If walking with a rolling walker, you continuously progress walker forward while you walk right, left, right, left, etc. Be sure to maintain good posture to avoid stooping forward, but keep from getting too close inside the walker because this can also throw off your balance. Be aware of obstacles such as electrical cords, rugs, and uneven surfaces whenever walking with an assistive device. Additional safety measures to consider when using a walker is during ambulation of steps or curbs. The walker is easier to remember because the walker goes first whether you are going up or down. While going up, your stronger leg would follow the walker. While going down, your weaker leg would follow the walker. Otherwise, whichever leg feels more comfortable is the one you would step with first. A common mistake made when transferring with a walker is grabbing onto the walker at the wrong time. This can increase chance for falls. When planning to sit, you want to find a firm, safe surface. You would back up to the seat until the backs of your knees are touching or are close to touching the seat. Next, you reach back for the seat with one hand at a time, then slowly lower yourself down. While standing, place the walker in front of you, but avoid grabbing the walker to try and lift yourself. This will cause the walker to tip and you will fall backwards. Instead, use your hands on the armrest or seat to help press up to stand. Once you are mostly upright and steady on your feet, you will grab the walker one hand at a time. Stand for a few moments to make sure you have your bearings before beginning to walk. Now that we have covered the common assisted devices used for balance, you may now wonder, should I or my loved one use one? And which one should be used? If you or your loved one has had several falls due to loss of balance, it may now be a good idea to start using an assistive device. Performing balance activities and strengthening exercises can help improve balance. However, it takes time to build those muscles, so the person may need extra assistance now. Once muscles and balance systems are stronger, it is likely that the assistive device used can be discontinued or, if using one already, be able to progress to a less supportive, more convenient option. 
reviewing the assistive devices in least to most supportive, a single tip cane would be the first line of defense in choosing a device. If that option doesn't work, then a quad cane or walker could be used for more support. If you or your loved one have noticed balance issues, have a fear of falling, or have had falls, be sure to report these changes to your doctor so they can further evaluate you, review your medications, and discuss possible treatment options including balance and strengthening exercises, assistive devices, and referral to a physical therapist.